Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. You know, there's still some people out there who don't quite understand how the internet works. And it's been around for a couple of years, and I hear they've got it on computers now. But some people don't understand how the internet works. So it was uh, with great amusement I read the story that was sent to me by several people, Nathan, Damon, Steve, and Mark. Governor wants to prosecute journalist who clicked view source on government site. And so those of you who know, if you go to a website on the internet, you can go up there in the pull downs and click view source and it will show you mechanically, in essence, what the website looks like from how it's put together. I'm not going to get too crazy into it because it all involves HTML and so on. But I got some very nice emails along with the links here explaining what all this is. And I knew some of it and some of it I wasn't as up on. But the point is that you can go to any website on the internet and do this because the information is there. And the reason it's there partly is because your computer has got to use the hypertext markup language to display the site on your computer. So the fact that a journalist did this, it embarrassed the state and the governor now wants to prosecute the journalist who did this despite the fact that it's Kind of like saying, I want to prosecute him for looking at our website. And this is one where somebody really needs to explain to the governor, um, you're doing it wrong. Okay, so we'll get into this. A uh, St. Louis dispatch journalist found 100,000 social security numbers exposed on a government website. And he reported the flaw in the website to the government. And he found that flaw by clicking on view source. Lorenzo Franceschi Bishari wrote this story. Uh, Missouri Governor Mike Parson wants to prosecute a journalist who warned the state that the government website put up the Social Security numbers of school teachers and administrators. And he said, look, there's this flaw in your website. I found it by looking at view source. Uh, Parson called the St. Louis Dispatch reporter Josh Renault a hacker and vowed to seek criminal prosecution at a press conference on Thursday. His crime? Clicking on view source on a publicly available web page. So the man's a hacker because he clicked on something on a website (laughs) that's there. (laughs) And he exposed the mistakes made by the state. Parson said, the state does not take this matter lightly. The administration is standing up against any and all perpetrators who attempt to steal personal information and harm Missourians. Well, maybe you shouldn't leave that personal information on a website where anybody can click and see it. The fault here clearly lies with the people who run that website, not with somebody who clicked on the website. Parson said he referred the case to the Cole County prosecutor and also asked the Missouri State Highway Patrol to investigate. I'm guessing that their highway patrol is the same as the state police in most states. Otherwise, I'm not sure where the highway patrol is uh, policing this. Unless, of course, you're talking about this being the the, uh, internet information superhighway or something. And and that could be because this governor sounds very confused. On Wednesday, the St. Louis Post-Dispatch reported that a flaw in the state's Department of Elementary and Secondary Education left Social Security numbers of the department employees exposed, and that includes counselors, administrators, and teachers. Renault reported that the SSNs were visible simply by viewing the HTML source code of the vulnerable pages, something that anyone can do with a couple of clicks on any modern browser. Doesn't matter which browser you're using because your browser's got to look at the HTML. So the office of Governor Parson declined to comment and referred uh, Vice.com to a recording of Parson's press conference. Now, the way that the St. Louis Dispatch and the reporter handled the situation appears to be a textbook example of ethical disclosure of a bug. The paper reported having found the bug in the web app set up to allow the public to search teacher certifications and credentials. More than 100,000 social security numbers, however, were exposed. Once the paper discovered that, they alerted the state government. The department fixed the bug, and the paper then published its story, but they waited until the bug was fixed before they reported it, because they didn't want this information exposed. They pointed the problem out, let it get fixed, and then they ran their story. And that, of course, is what's really going on here. The governor's embarrassed, and the newspaper embarrassed him by publishing the story. And now, he should be thankful that they spotted the problem, 
brought it to his attention, and let them fix it before they notified anybody about it. But that's not how you work if you're in the government. Uh, Parsons' comments are also a textbook example of government officials seemingly not having any clue how technology works and vilifying people who do ethical security research as criminals rather than simply thanking them for doing a public service that makes us all safer. And that's what he should have done. He should have thanked the guy. Thank you for pointing it out to us. Thank you for sitting on the story until we fixed it. Thank you. They should have done that. The newspaper delayed publishing this report to give the department time to take steps to protect teachers' private information and to allow the state to ensure that no other agency's web applications contain similar vulnerabilities. That's what the St. Louis Post-Dispatch wrote in its article. A spokesperson, again for the paper, said, the reporter did the responsible thing by reporting his findings to the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education so that the state could act to prevent disclosure and misuse. A hacker is someone who subverts computer security with malicious or criminal intent. Here there is no breach of any firewall or security and certainly no malicious intent. For DESE to deflect its failures by referring to this as hacking is unfounded. Thankfully, these failures were discovered. So as of right now, the governor thinks that the reporter should be prosecuted as a computer hacker because he went onto a government website, clicked on a link that's publicly available to anybody, and then looked at what was there, and what was there was placed there by someone who is incompetent at the state. And rather than tracking that person down and saying, what were you doing or not doing when you exposed the hundreds of thousands of social security numbers, they, they want to prosecute the journalist. Okay? And you do understand, if a journalist figured this out this simply, someone else would have figured it out that simply as well. And instead of notifying the state, they would have harvested the numbers and sold them on the dark web. But that's not what happened here. So... Just so we're clear here, the information's on the website. Anybody could click and see it back before it was fixed. And a reporter found it, saw it, and notified the state, said, hey, you got a problem here. The state fixed the problem. The paper ran the story. And now the state wants to prosecute the reporter as a criminal computer hacker. <laughs> and it's so crazy and bizarre. Yeah, I'm laughing. It's, it's not funny if the guy gets prosecuted. It'll be a waste of resources, and it'll be sad if that happens. But this is a great example where somebody has the knee-jerk response, hey, this person made us look bad. He must be wrong. Once in a while, when somebody points out that you've made a mistake and you actually are wrong, you don't blame the person who pointed the mistake out. You go, oh, we're wrong. Let's fix that. Let's fix that. Government makes mistakes all the time. So the idea that you're going to flip out like this because someone exposed one mistake you made, I have to imagine that working in the governor's circle there has got to be a nightmare. It's got to be like one of Dante's rings of hell working for the governor because if, if he wants to prosecute <laughs> someone who points out a mistake on a government website, can you imagine what he does like when somebody brings him his breakfast and it's cold? <laughs> it's got to be a nightmare. It's got to be a nightmare. So... I feel sorry for the people of Missouri who've got to put up with a governor who's this uh, numbskulled, as we would say. But uh, Damon, Nathan, Stephen, Mark sent me a story. Thanks a lot. It's from Vice.com, by the way. I missed that at the top. From Vice.com, Lorenzo Franceschi Bichari wrote the story. Governor wants to prosecute journalist who clicked view source on government site. What will they think of next? Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. If you think nobody cares about you, try missing a couple of payments.